<clears throat> in this video, uh, we're going to look at uh, curve sketching, revisit curve sketching, except this time we're working with um, exponential functions and the product rule and the chain rule. Um, we'll look at A and B in this case. Um, and remember the, the goal here, of course, um, if you wanted to know something about this function, you just type it into Wolfram Alpha or any graphing calculator and you'll find everything that you know. But the purpose here is a little bit more about analysis and understanding the nature of um, how mathematicians communicate and use logic and reason. Um, so the emphasis here again is on analysis, also some algebra skills that are going to be useful for those pursuing mathematics. So in the first case, um, I should mention, what we're supposed to do is uh, identify important features, which include minimum, maximum, and inflection points. And so I need to find those. In order to find minimum and maximum, recall that those are stationary points, and those are points when the uh, um, slope of the tangent line happens to be zero. So those are um, possibly stationary inflection points. We'll see. So we have to find the derivative, and I see a product of two different functions, x squared and e to the negative x. So I set up my derivative using the product rule, first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. The derivative of e to the negative x is e to the negative x times the derivative of negative x, which is negative 1. e to the negative x carries down, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. So, collecting uh, anything that I, well, just rearranging basically, 2x times e to the x, or negative x here, and negative 1 times x squared Finally, um, factor out e to the negative x from both terms so that we get an expression that's going to be easy to differentiate again. I know I have to differentiate again because I need inflection points, and those are found from the second derivative. Now, before I do that, I'm going to find my stationary points. To find stationary points, I let the first derivative equal 0. In order to do that, I have to make my derivative equal 0 as an equation. Here, I'm going to apply the zero product rule. <clears throat> That is to say, if these two numbers are multiplied together and 0 is the product, then one of these two has to equal 0. e to the negative x will never equal 0, so basically, I can just ignore it and find out when does this expression equal 0. It's a nice little parabola. So I factor out a negative x, send, use the zero product rule again, and I find that when x is 0 or 2, that's where we have stationary points. To learn more, go back to the original function and evaluate at 0, and evaluate at 2. We learned 0, 0 is the uh, is x-intercept, a y-intercept, and a stationary point all at 1. And when x is 2, we put in 2 squared times e to the negative 2, which amounts to 2 squared, which is 4. e to the negative 2 is 1 over e squared. So this value, which is probably going to be around a half or so, is the maximum, the highest value on the function in that area. So we make a line di or a, sorry, a, uh, a sine diagram to express when the function is increasing and when the function is decreasing. Um, now, to do this, I actually um, I used um, inspection. That is to say, I didn't write down, but I put in f of <clears throat> negative 1, and it was easy to tell that I was going to end up with a negative number. Sorry, not up there, but in my derivative itself. I could tell I was going to get a negative number by substituting negative 1 into this expression. <clears throat> And then we found a positive first derivative when x was uh, between, uh, um, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought here, between 0 and 2. So I evaluated f of 1, f prime of 1, and I evaluated f prime of 3. And so we know the function is going to decrease, stop at 0, increase for a while, stop at 2, and turn around again. We also have these coordinates. So the next thing I need to find out then is when will the function be concave up or down? So, I take the derivative and I differentiate it using again the product rule. Now I did this a little bit more quickly than I did in the past. I took the derivative of this in my head and I took the derivative of e to the negative x in my head. So that's it right here. So we have e to the negative x times the derivative of this stuff plus the derivative of e to the negative x times that stuff. Factoring out e to the negative x again collecting like terms inside and I can now determine that when the second derivative equals zero we're going to have points of inflection. Remember the zero product rule again this exponential function will never equal zero but this function here being quadratic it does or it could. To find out 
find its first not factorable, so I use the quadratic formula, and that's where I learned that x is 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. So let's take all these pieces and put them together. We have a minimum at 0, 0. We have a uh, maximum at 2, approximately 1 half, and we have inflection points. In fact, if we were to make a quick sketch, uh, we would first learn that... Uh, Sorry, I got distracted by my own device here. Um, if we go over 2 and up around a half or so, then we can see that our inflection points are going to be plus or minus square root of 2, which is about 1.4. So I'm going to take my maximum point, and I'm going to go over 1.4, so that's going to put me right around here. And I'm going to go to the right, the same distance, puts a point right about there, and then I'm going to draw my curve. Notice what we have is inflection points, which means we need to be concave down the entire way here, concave up from here to here, and concave up from here to here. We can and should probably use the second derivative to verify concavity, do the line diagrams and all that other kind of stuff, but for now, for the interest of time, I'm just going to demonstrate how we can use technology and verify the quality of my graph. Against an actual digitally drawn graph, my graph is adequate. Um, probably be a little better, but you know, again, this is a freehand graph. Um, I'll show you the process again one more time, maybe a little less talking. Um, we'll just follow the same trend. Uh, we're going to take the first derivative, and this is going to require the chain rule, so we keep e um, to the 4 minus x squared power times the derivative of the at exponent, which is negative 2x. Rearrange, and now set equal to 0 to find any stationary points. If the first derivative is 0, that means negative 2x times e to the 4 minus x squared has to equal 0. Since exponential functions don't equal 0, this is the only chance we get. That is when negative 2x equals 0, or x equals 0, then we will have a stationary point. Evaluating at the original function, f of 0 gives me e to the fourth power, which is going to be a very large number. As uh, e is less than 3, but you take 3 to the fourth power, that's 81. So this is going to be less than 81. All right, so that's a stationary point, and I know it's going to be a maximum um, based on my um, evaluation of other things, but um, I'll show in a line diagram a little bit later. Um, right now, I'm going to find the second derivative. Once again, use the product rule, and factor out anything that's common factors after I simplify and rewrite. And find inflection, I set the second derivative equal to zero, apply the zero product rule, ignore the exponential since that doesn't reach zero, and solve the quadratic. This time I'll use inverses, I'll take the square root of both sides and get plus or minus one over the square root of two. If you remember your trig, that's around 0 0.707, so I round it to plus or minus 0 0.71. So I'm going to take all this information and um, I'm going to show you briefly the uh, sign diagrams after I state all of my inflection and stationary points. First of all, I find out when the function is increasing or decreasing by inspecting the first derivative. We increase when x is negative and we decrease when x is positive. For concavity, I find that we are concave down between those inflection points and we are concave up <coughs> without those inflection points. Um, or, you know, on the other sides. So, I also evaluated at the function since, um, well, it wasn't that difficult. I found e to the 3 and 1 half, or e to the 7 halves power. So when I go over about 0.7, I'm going to go up um, somewhere in the 60s, probably. I can find out with a calculator later, but I'm just getting the information down. I draw a curve that's concave down in the middle and concave up on the left and right. Once again, increasing when x is negative. Concave up, concave down, but still increasing. Decreasing when x is positive, it's concave down, concave up forevermore. Check this with the uh, technology. You see I had to fudge the scale quite a bit to make it match my graph. Because uh, we go from negative 2 to 2 on the x-axis, but my graph goes all the way up to 150. Anyway, you can see uh, superimposed over uh, the graph is the graph that I drew on the recent slide. So, anyway, I hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching.